Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. What I'm going to show you here is how to create a first class assignment for my media technical theory class. First and perhaps most importantly, read the assignment. Almost all the questions you'll have about how to do this are in that document. Download it right away and read it over during the first week of class. Yeah, the first week. You're not busy with school yet and you don't have to do anything about it. Just read it. Now, leave it for a few days. Let the idea of this assignment percolate in the back of your head for a while. Near the end of the first week, have another look at it with the course outline next to it. Compare what I want you to do with what the course is about. Your assignment should, after all, be relevant to the course, media technical theory. Notice that the course isn't production theory, so try and get most of that kind of stuff out of your head and concentrate on just technology. Now, that said, technology is a means to a production end, so you will find that your assignment for me may address how a particular technology is useful in making a particular kind of production. And that's okay, as you'll see. So now it's time to think about what you could do your production on. It's a big world, so ask yourself this simple question. What do I find that's really cool about audio, or music, or sound, or digital media, website building, or color theory, or whatever? Scribble a short list of ideas. Head over to the internet and start searching for some of your topics. Remember though that academic or professional references are what you're looking for, but it's fine to start with Wikipedia or maybe a technology manufacturer's website, but those may not be suitable references for your final project. Use those first sources as a way of wrapping your head around the topic and to help narrow your focus. Now let's have a look at how I went about making my assignment. I've been interested in music synthesizers since I was a teenager. I think the guy who invented some of those early synthesizers, Robert Moog, was a pretty cool dude. I mean, what a great mind to come up with something like that. But I realized he wasn't the first person to come up with synthesized music, so I started looking at who came before him. You can see that right away, even though my topic is Bob Moog, I'm already thinking out of the box and realizing that the topic is bigger than just him. So I started with some quick searching on the internet about early synthesizers. I'd heard of a thing called a theremin, so I looked that up and found out more about Lev Theremin, the inventor. I read about six articles on theremin to get a feel for what he'd done and how the theremin device worked. Why so many? Because I'm going to synthesize, pardon the pun, what I found in these articles, and I want to put it in my own words since I don't want to plagiarize. Every word I'll be writing in my script is my own, no cutting and pasting. As I found each article, I started to keep a working bibliography. Now, frankly, this used to be a pain, especially trying to make it in MLA format, but there are now lots of free tools to do this formatting with you. We have RefWorks at Ryerson, and my personal favorite is EasyBib for quick assignments. So I put each reference into EasyBib and copied and pasted the MLA formatted reference into a new Word document, which I always leave open while I'm researching, so I can add new sources quickly, saving the doc after I add each one. After I had a bunch of theremin articles, I figured the next development would probably be electronic organs. There's lots of articles out there, some of them by Hammond and Wurlitzer, which actually led me through some links to some of the experiments in early music synthesis done at Bell Labs and Columbia in Princeton. More notes, more articles, some in academic journals from universities, some from professional music journals, all saved in my working bibliography. Already I've taken a couple of hours to research stuff and I haven't even started on Bob Moog yet, so I figured it was time. Back to the internet where there's tons of stuff about him. But here's where it got interesting. There are some main websites about Moog, and of course about Moog the company, but I realized this whole piece was just going to be me yammering on unless I found a good interview clip with Bob Moog himself explaining some of his technology. So over to YouTube, where I found some good sound bites. Those clips had to be extracted from the video, which took more work. Don't forget that any media you use has to be added to your working bibliography too. So now I've got my history of synthesized music in hand, and I have a lot of material on Moog, including some sound bites. Time spent so far? Five hours. In my piece, I want to give some perspective on how Moog's inventions changed the face of modern music. So once again, more research. I found lists of popular musicians who were doing progressive rock, jazz, and even classical music with synthesizers. I realized I'd need sound clips of some of this music, so more hunting for recordings and then splitting them into audio files. I've now basically done my research. Time spent so far? Eight hours. You'll notice that I haven't written a word of the script yet, but I have a lot of material and one heck of a working bibliography. 
So now I sit down with all this material and start putting it together into a radio production script. A bit from here, back to from another reference from there, and so on. In the end, I used only six references to write the script out of my almost 20 original articles, since many of them said the same thing anyway. The writing and revising took two hours, and that was for a short script of only four minutes. Time spent so far? 10 hours. The script written, I now read it into the computer in a nice professional recording environment. Yeah, right. I really did it in front of my webcam, recording the audio in Audacity. I flubbed a few takes, so the whole session took about an hour. Time spent so far? 11 hours. Editing together the spoken word and all the music and sound bites took about an hour a minute to get it just right and perfect. That was five more hours. Time spent so far? 16 hours. Then I made a final backup of everything and burned three files onto the CD and labeled the disc and the packaging properly. That took another hour, which isn't bad really, since I had the script finished anyway and the final bibliography was a quick editing job from my working bibliography document. When it was all said and done, the whole process took only 17 hours, from the first time I looked at the assignment until I had a CD that was ready to hand in. And that's how you create a winning assignment for media technical theory.